Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> Queen Mary Dark Heart. Once again, hosting one of Southern California's most iconic haunts. Returning once more from the fog is the Queen Mary's Dark Harbor. Here to represent Dark Harbor are to trap boys named Tanner and Skippy. Yeah. Hey. Do, no, all right, do, we can all agree these are all horribly, horribly bad ideas. Yeah. So why are you tempting the fates by inviting the most dangerous, malevolent, diabolical race in existence? Because we love them. Yeah. What do you think it's I think it's just a bunch of actors over there in that tin can playing dress up. No, these ghosts are real. If if we don't do anything, the ghosts can take. I told you I was gonna crash the dark harbor panel. You cannot call me that in public, Mom! <laughs> okay, just give me a sec! It's you too! interruption folks and now without further ado here are your dark harbor panelists our first panelist is part carl drogo because of his huge hulking arms and part robin aaron because he kind of disappeared last season and now he's back looking as hunky as ever please welcome executive producer steve sheldon is part Neria Stormborn because she puts the Queen in Queen Mary. But she's also part Tyrion Lannister because she drinks and she knows things. Please welcome executive producer Charity Hill. Yeah. 
Our next panelist is equal parts the hound and the mountain for no other reason than he looks like he could kick both their asses and the collective ass of everyone in this room. Please welcome production designer Mr. John Cook. Our next panelist is part Peter Bayless because I'm told he has a little finger if you know what I'm saying. And part Arya Stark, not because he's a badass, but because whenever you ask him to do something, he says, eh, not today. Please welcome our technical director, Mr. Adam Conga. Our final panelist is part George R. R. Martin, because they bear a striking resemblance, and I've never seen them in the same room together. And part Lord Barry's, because he's bald and reportedly is also a eunuch. In truth, He's all parts Jon Snow because he's the true king of the north, the one, the only talent director, Mr. David Wally. because no one really knows how he became in power and even dead, he's really annoying. <laughs> and part Bran Stark, because he takes up a lot of screen time but he really does nothing but sit around and stare at everyone and creep them out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the captain! <laughs> Guess who's back? Back again. <laughs> Captain's back. <laughs> Tell her friend. You all look terrible. Uh, thanks. No, like really, really bad. It's been a busy year. <laughs> Bloody awful. No, I've been sitting in a chair for two hours and you couldn't spend five minutes spray tanning Wally. It looks like he hasn't seen the light of day in a year. For God's sake, man, look at you. Yeah. Go outside. <laughs> Little Adam Conker. <laughs> Look at you. Did you know everyone? Adam Conger used to sing tenor for NSYNC. <laughs> Way back in the day. What happened to your boyish good looks? So they go bye 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 bye. Is that what happened? <laughs> and John Cook. Look at you. How many hordes are you working on this year, John? Like 10, 20? I mean, lucky for you, LA traffic's not a bitch at all, is it? <laughs> It's not like you live out in some urban hellhole like Rancho Cucamonga or something. <laughs> Tell me, John. Tell me, how many times have you had to show your passport on the way in, John? <laughs> actually, he does work or live in, in Rancho Cucamonga. I don't know if you know that, but he actually. Oh my God, Conga! <laughs> really? You don't think I would tee up that joke without knowing the subtle irony of it? For God's sake, man! Who brought you anyway? What is this, your first panel? A little scared under the lights or something, is that it? It's warm up here, yes. Steve, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm fine. <laughs> Look at that. Alright Steve, I'm gonna let you kick it off, go on. Tell these people what's happening at Dark Harbor this year, and go. aware of, but this year we're actually celebrating the 10th season of Dark Harbor. Uh, that's impossible. I've only been the captain for eight. Nine years there for me. Eight years for me. Yeah, see, 10 years. No, not possible. Um, I, uh, I actually... You got something to say down there, Skippy? Huh? You should have gone before we went on stage, I told you that! I know. You're a I... weak planner, that's your problem! Yeah, yeah. I've actually been here for ten years. With Dark Harbor. Just that way. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Just you? <laughs> and this guy over here. <laughs> Wally? Good lord! Wally's been here since 1710! <laughs> Wally was here before the ship wrecked! He was here before there even was a ship! I knew Wally when he still had hair on his head before it migrated south for the millennium and died on his chin. <laughs> you, 
you really wrote me as a dick this year, didn't you? <laughs> Ten years! Wow! I like how you're not saying anything and you're sticking to the script because you didn't write yourself a line until page eight. <laughs> no, uh, uh, that's it, no. We're waiting with breathless anticipation for this famous first line of yours. Page eight. <laughs> We've seen a lot in 10 years, haven't we? Do you remember, do you remember the village? And the cage? Do you remember that stage show when I had to sing Row, row, row your boat for God's sake? Do you remember that? Yes. We have certainly seen a lot, I can tell you. So, what else is happening, Steve? Well, ah. you know, I just thought of something. There was someone before me, wasn't there? Whilst I have always been in control of Dark Harbor, there was one before me. Did, did he just say wildest? He said wildest. It's Shakespeare, Conger! <laughs> Get some culture! Shakespeare, wildest. Or as you teenagers call him, Willie the Shake. <laughs> Do you remember that she-devil, Steve, that pretended she was all that back in the day? Pudara? Bundara! Good God! What was that? It's like she was a hornier version of Graceful Gale. <laughs> I, I get that one. I get that. That's a good one. I don't think you do, Charlie in the Chocolate Factory! <laughs> Goodness me. Steve, please save this panel. You know, we're really excited this year. We're excited every year to bring what's new with Dark Harbor, but this year, uh, you know, one of the things that is most exciting for us is every year to try to develop new paths and new opportunities to open up areas of the ship that our Dark Harbor, Harbor audience hasn't been able to experience before. And this year, we're introducing two areas of the ship that have previously been completely off limits. Oh! I like the sounds off limits, because previously I've been off limits. I don't know what that means either. So, tell me about these off-limit places, Steve. Well, in one of our mazes, guests are going to get to walk through areas of the engine room that they haven't seen before, including, including a path that will take them directly through door 13. Oh, I love door 13. I mean, literally, technically, it is the most haunted place on board the ship. Yeah, um, in 1967, there was a crew member, 18 years old, who was literally crushed to death by door 13. This is page uh, eight, I believe. So this is where, um, <laughs> this is where Half Hatch Henry was actually based on that character. That's it. That's, that's you built up eight pages before you said a word, and that was your sentence. Half Hatch Henry is based on that character. <laughs> Something that everyone who knows Dark Harbor already knows. All anticipation, no deli- Maybe you are George R. R. Martin after all. <laughs> By the way, Half Hatch Henry is that person. Of course he is. Thank you. Monsters are real people. We have feelings too. We're not invisible. <laughs> You mentioned that there were two places that people haven't been before. That was one. I'm hoping the other isn't Rancho Cucamonga. <laughs> I am hoping for Wally's sake that maybe it's a gym or a salad bar. Oh. Hey, you wrote this script. Don't, don't boo. <laughs> it's up to you to figure out when I'm on script and off script. <laughs> It's a drinking game. <laughs> so, in addition to being able to walk through door 13 for the first time ever at Dark Harbor, this second one is, I think, what I'm most excited about. This year we're going to be able to take Dark Harbor guests deeper into the bowels of the ship than they have ever gone before. And when I say deeper, I mean literally six floors below sea level into the boiler room. <laughs> I love the 
boiler room. It's so spooky. That is the perfect place for a maze, Steve. Well, yeah, but I mean, we love the boiler room. It's a great place for anything, but... Spit it out, Steve! What do you say? Oh, God, Charity, you turned it into a bar, didn't you? <laughs> I mean how you get there, it's a secret. So you've got to find your way to wooden nickels and tokens that will take you somewhere in a maze. And if you can find the glass elevator that takes you six fathoms under the sea level to our most exclusive bar yet. My favorite. Come on, Captain. It's actually a really good thing. If it were a maze, no one would really get to spend any time there and enjoy and appreciate the majesty of the space. But because it's a bar... Oh! Because it's a bar, people actually get to spend time inside the boiler room and not just get pushed through in a conga line in a maze. Exactly. exactly. I like it. That's good. You know what? You know what? I'm, go I'm going to give you a token for that. That was... That was Don't give them to us. Give them to them. from last year, are you still using the same tokens? Or are they different? Same, same. Same? God, we're bloody cheap, aren't we? <laughs> Congratulations, Steve, you get, you get a token. I like that, I like the sounds of that indeed. <laughs> it's exciting. It is exciting! So people will be in the boiler room. Absolutely. All right. Congo, where are we up to? You got the script in front of you. Jesus. <laughs> Say something, Matt. When you start riffing like that, I'm like, where is he going? I don't know what is happening. Bars. We're still talking about bars, Captain. Oh, we're still talking about bloody bars, are we? I was prepared to move on. No, let's let's keep talking about bars, shall we? Charity may have something to say to that. Yeah, I know. Charity. All this bar talk, right? So, how many bars do we have this year? Thirteen. Lucky number thirteen. <laughs> We have 13 bars, and um, they're going to be spectacular. I mean, we got four secret bars. So again, you have to find your way to a token to get into these secret bars. You know, we've really, uh, we've really grown up over the years, haven't we? We started with two bars, then we went to four bars and five bars, then we had a secret bar in the maze, then we had a secret bar in all the mazes. Soon we're going to have secret bars within secret bars, Charity. <laughs> we're like the Starbucks of booze. <laughs> You really know how to throw a party, don't you? Guilty. Now, Popeye, before we move away from all the bars, speaking of Popeye, maybe throw Wally some spinach once in a while. You know, dial him a salad, brother. You know, all you can eat is just a suggestion. It's not a challenge. Speaking of all you can eat. Again, that was pretty much in the script how he wrote it. That was not, that was not it. No one believes me anymore. All you can eat. We have an all-you-can-eat buffet. Uh, with, all the these, bars. with all of these bars, Charity, I'm starting to doubt that you actually work for Dark Harbor. I think, I think you work for like Uber or Lyft now. Is that right? I do not. You sure you don't have a family member at BFF? No, sir. No? Do you have stocks in the company at all? I wish. Fine. All right. 99 bars is a great idea. For that, you will get a token. There we go. Congratulations. Now you can get into your own bar. Nice. Fine. All right. Let's talk about entertainment, shall we? Steve, are we going to be entertaining this year? You are, but that's actually going to be a, a question for Mr. Wally. Oh, Wally has decided to speak. Wally, what entertainment do we have this year? And can you also tell me when you're going to finish the last two novels of Game of Thrones because season eight is on you, sir? We're going to have a lot of entertainment at Dark Arbor this year. Uh, back on our fire stage, uh, the big top stage, we're going to have our fire performers. Um, once again, we're going to have our sideshow performers, our magicians. Um, over closer to the ship, we're going to have the aerial ring, which will feature our aerial performances, uh, hula hoopers, uh, singers, musicians. And of course, we have something else, the Queen Mary Slider. <laughs> Slider team is badass this year. You guys have no idea. These guys have been working out since before last year. Uh, <laughs> they're going to be back this year with two shows nightly and also entertaining us all over the place. Dark Art for lots of entertainment. You know what? You know what? That was, that was actually pretty good. You, you get the token. 
There we go. A token for you. Well done, Molly. Nice work. Did you, did you throw that away? Didn't do it. Did you throw that away? Never would. No. I, I can't even, what did you make them out of? I can't even break it. That's insane. Yeah. All right. That's it for, for your entertainment. Yes, sir. Wonderful. Don't you think that the coffee cup that was on the table in, in episode four of the last season was really just a metaphor for how sloppy the showrunners had become? <laughs> Alright, you keep telling yourself that, champ. I've seen this script, I'm starting to believe it. Adam! Yes. Go! <laughs> what is he coming about? Yeah, we're, uh, I think we should move on to, um, Maces. Maces! Is that all you came here to hear about was Maces? Yeah! That's smarter than I thought. All right. John. My turn. <laughs> what? Well, you're not just sitting there looking pretty. Oh, thanks. Hey, yeah! Are you ready, John? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Steve, tell me about the mazes. Well, you know, in 2017, we tried our hand at adding a seventh maze at Dark Harbor. And what we learned was that for Dark Harbor, bigger is not necessarily better. So last year, we went back to focusing on our six mazes and making them as phenomenal as we possibly could. Mm. And that's when Mr. John Cook joined the band, right? That's right. That's when John and his team, like and Garrett. Okay, oh, okay, 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 Steve. Okay, he's sitting right there, Steve. Okay, okay. John, <laughs> yes, over sir. to you. Take it away. What'd you guys think of the new mazes? <laughs> yeah. Could be better. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, no. What? Feast. Feast? I'm talking about Feast. Feast. <laughs> feast was personally one of my favorites. Uh, it was the first maze that my team got to tackle on the ship. Which was interesting being there late at night by yourself locked up, but yeah, that's fun. So, um, we wanted to really make Feast the really over the top, blood and guts, high energy maze that I think it ended up becoming, right? It was, it was yep. a lot of fun. Yep. Interactive, you get to crawl through things, not just go on normal paths, you're on the ship, that's always great. And uh, we felt we got that maze to a really, really good level, um, but we wanted to take it up a notch. Kind of a big notch, actually. Um, towards the end, I know somebody had already spoken about this uh, earlier in the panel today, um, but that maze may or may not go down further into the bowels of the ship and hit areas that most people have not been. Yeah. Let me tell you how much paint it took to get us from that feast down to that, the bowels of the ship. But um, what's really, really cool about this spot when we're talking about you to go to the infamous door 13 is you are coming face to face with Half Hatch in that location. I think it's a really, really awesome, strong moment. In the actual spot that it happened, um, that Charity was talking about earlier. And being down there, obviously that means we are in the engine room itself towards the end of this maze. <laughs> And I don't know if anybody's ever been down there, but it is absolutely mind-blowing and getting the depth out of the whole ship. And we were able to do a lot of really, really cool stuff through the scenic lighting to really make everything pop. And those are all the original parts you're walking through, and it's really, really incredible. Like, how much would it cost to replicate that? Oh, there is no number. There's, there's no number. This is, this is, you all know the Queen Mary. Most of you know the Queen Mary. But not only that, we're, we're in those bowels where a lot of the stories that you've heard um, happens. A lot of this stuff is down there. Um, it's it's haunted. Our guys won't go down there late at night by themselves. And you guys get to go in there. Good luck! It's really cool that we're able to really, one of the things we like about Dark Harbor is that we're able to base our event upon the real things that happen to the ship to actually be able to to, to hit an exact moment, an exact place on the ship that ties our story together is like a big, big moment for us. So we're very happy with it. Yeah, and just the last thing on that, I think uh, when we were, that was like the first maze we were going on to site to look at. And when we discovered that, we were able to kind of figure out a path to get us down to that ship. I think all of us were kind of 
losing it. Like, he's so Absolutely, excited. Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's really exciting. Plus, it's just great to be able to tell the story of the chef, which is just creepy in itself. The fact that he was literally burned alive in his own oven. That's a true story, and you really can't, like, write that. It's just, it's real, and that makes it that much creepier. Speaking of which, uh, I believe you come face to face with him down in the house of the chef, Maybe. right? Maybe. You gotta know that story. I was like, tell me more. <laughs> what was that? All right, so that was, that was Feast. What's next, John? Circus? <laughs> Ringmaster's back. No, I'm not saying that that works. I don't, I don't no, see that. I got nothing with that. No. But she is back for Circus. Uh, we've known this one for a while. This one we certainly uh, vamped up as well. New path, new scares, new elements, and more secret sections that you guys can go in as well. And I think one of the, one of the things that, we, that we really liked uh, was the beginning and going through this encampment and coming uh, into contact with the characters, kind of in their more resting uh, habitat in their, their area. So we really kind of leaned into that and expanded upon that uh, encampment feel quite a bit more. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really cool. You're basically sneaking into the traveling circus and you think that you're getting a jump on the circus, but I think the ringmaster ends up getting a jump on you. So it's a fun one. Nice. So we got two out of the way, John. What's next? <laughs> Intrepid. Who took on that one? I mean, I, I loved Intrepid last year. Like, I thought it came out really, really well. I was very, very happy with it. So what we wanted to do was to, to build, continue to build on top of that and go back and refine the details and just to make it more of an immersive experience. And um, I think we put a lot more into the interiors and the catacombs to, to, to really make it feel claustrophobic. Yeah, it's great. Everything that we've loved about this maze and, and other mazes that we've done here, we certainly want to amp everything up for you guys. You guys come year after year. Uh, we wish you know, we could do all new things every year, but you know, we can't. So what we're doing with these mazes, Intrepid being one of them, is we're taking those elements that everybody has loved We've taken of that feedback, and John has done an amazing job with him, his team as well, and we, we've amplified everything that you're going through. So that way it doesn't feel, uh, it do it doesn't feel like the same maze for you guys. And that's kind of what we're doing for all these mazes, not just uh, um, the, the two that we just talked about, but for Intrepid as well. And, and I, think we've, I think we've nailed that. So next up you have B340, is that correct? <laughs> Samuel the Savage, also back. Um, this one as well. This one is uh, you know, enhanced scares. We've, you know, we've really figured out what works in a lot of these mazes. Areas that um, that we need to uh, amp up, and that's what we've really focused on this year. Again, with John's team, with our team, with the with the actual scares themselves. Um, I think this is going to feel different, darker, grittier, bloodier. Um, not only that, but the ending is different as well. So I think this is going to be something you guys are going to, you guys are going to love. I don't think people know this, but the said vortex that's at the ship actually goes through this portion of the maze. Every time we walk through it on just a back end walk, there are like, there's one specific place that we all dread going to, and it's actually in this maze. So hopefully you can find it. It's, it'll literally stand your hairs up, even if no one's around. I noticed last year that Samuel Savage was bold. Is that something that you all talked about? Is this a bold thing? You all feel that that's successful moving forward? I'm not bold. Wally, Cook, no. It was just something I noticed. Why? Why did you make him bold? See, I put you all on the spot now. See, don't you wish I just... This is why we have a script. <laughs> I'm lost. Fine. All right. We're gonna buy on to lullaby. <laughs> Personally, I think lullaby is one of the weak mazes. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know what I mean? How do you all feel about lullaby? Seriously? 
seriously? You don't love it that much. Did, what, did she bribe you with tacos? Was it, or what is it, ramen now? Soy? Did you tell them all you are going to be the captain? Is that what it was? All right, John, what have you done to Lullaby? Lullaby, man. This is, uh, as a fan, this is always one of my favorite mazes. And I think when we first talked last year, our, our plan was almost twofold, where we were anticipating to really, really give Lullaby a huge makeover. So this year, we're taking it in a whole different direction. Um, you can see some of the really, really cool artwork that we have up. But what we're going to do, I think, uh, if anybody remembers Skippy that was coming in here, right? So Skippy's going to be coming into the ship, uh, the area of the ship where Scary Mary is rumored to haunt. And he's performing one of his famous, well, seven subscriber YouTube seances that you all are, are all invited to. So coming into the ship, you're gonna give, uh, you're gonna take part in the seance. I think she wants a token. Why is the smallest monster the biggest pain in my ass? <laughs> So anyway, anyways, after, uh, after you take part in the seance, you're going to go uh, down to the ship and you're going to encounter Scary Mary. And you're going to be able to engage in her games. And as you're going through this experience, you're going to kind of put it together. She's kind of leading you into a certain area where we have fully recreated and built out the pool scene. Except you're not going to be walking overhead of the pool, you're going to be walking through the pool. Where Mary brings her victims to drown. It's really great, you guys. I did a walkthrough of it the other day with like just regular lights on and my team walking through the thing, and it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I, I, I know where everybody's supposed to be positioned and stuff, and I was still looking all around me the whole time. It's great. And it, it's one of those mazes that oh, it's kind of had that playful edge in the past, and that's something we wanted to keep, but wanted to take it also into a very, very dark and sinister place. And some of the, the set work and the prop work in there is gorgeous. Is gorgeous is an interesting way of putting it, but yes, <laughs> in a really dark way. <laughs> well, that sounds absolutely amazing. I'm pretty impressed, John. That sounds badass. And in fact, a token for you. Well done. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So now all of you have been given tokens. But you know what? I, what? You know, I, I didn't get one. Like, why not? You're gonna get a token captain's boot in your ass if you keep interrupting me. <laughs> Good God. All right, all right. No, no, no. Here we go, Conga. Here's your chance to redeem yourself. Great. The last maze. One of our most popular, Dead Rise. <laughs> right? Now, you yeah, can't... Actually, 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 I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. What, what, no, you can't screw that up. It is impossible to screw it up. It is perfect the way it is. So you left it alone, didn't you? Well, we, we might have, uh, we might not be doing it this year. <laughs> what? Hold on. Hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What now? <laughs> did, did you just say, did you just say that you got rid of dead rice? I, I, I did. I, I did say that, Captain. You're a dead man. You're a dead man. I'm gonna kill you, Conga! I You're just, a dead man! There's a reason, hey, there, there's a reason, there's a reason why we got rid of dead rice. Why are you enjoying this? <laughs> we have a new maze. No trust in you, John. Sell me on it. Pressure's on, John. I want my token. <laughs> well, Captain, I'm listening. Rogue is the name of the new maze. I see you. You are going to be embarking out on a journey that is anchored in the true story of a massive rogue wave that took over the Queen Mary wall, it was the great ghost, and almost capsized her. 
Okay. <laughs> so as you're walking through this experience, you're gonna be, God damn it, you're making me nervous, man. <laughs> the whole ship is gonna be kind of doing a twisting as it's turning over. I'm totally brand stalking you right now. I know, it's weird. <laughs> But what's really... Um, <laughs> what's, what's truly awesome about this maze and it's making it uh, a completely different thing that I personally have never seen before is the maze is being built underneath an entire dome and it's going to have an open air experience. So as you're walking through it, you're looking out the windows, you're going to see the waves coming. And it's going to be matched with 4D effects to make it feel like the whole ship's moving. Am I getting there? Am I getting better? You're gonna, have the, you're, gonna, you're gonna have the water coming in, but what's cool is you're gonna be on the ship while it starts to take that turn, and the whole, all the scenes are gonna con continue to twist until it's completely upside down. Okay. And the good news is, there's a captain. There's a captain. A captain. Captain. There's a captain. But not the captain. Mm, kind of. What color uniform does this captain wear? Blue. 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 But not white. Not white, no. No, because I wear the white. Yes, sir. Because I am the captain. Yes. I just want to make sure we're on the same page, John. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're good. You're the captain. Good. No. Please don't crush my head. <laughs> okay, fine. No. I'm on board. I'm on board with this rogue thing. I'm with it. Good. It's, it's going to be incredible. Promise. What do you all think? <laughs> do we trust John? We trust John. It's a, it is a kick-ass maze. You guys are going to love it. And it's um, yet another maze that ties into the true history of the Queen Mary. When she was uh, the Great Ghost during wartime service, when she was carrying the most troops, she actually set the record for carrying the most uh, number of, the highest number of people on a man-made vessel anywhere in the world. She still holds that record. On that voyage, she was hit by this wave, and she was three degrees from completely capsizing. She was carrying over 16,000 troops to war. And they say if we had lost the Queen Mary, not only would we have lost those 16,000 troops, but we, the course of history probably would have been changed because of the role that the Queen Mary played uh, on helping the Allied forces win the war. So it's, it's an actual historical event, and we're really excited to tie that in to our <laughs> with, that, with that concept was, was kind of given to us and saying, hey, do you want to turn this into experience? That's the exact moment we wanted to capture was that, that chaos and that panic and letting that be the fear that's, that's throughout this entire maze and that you're caught in the middle of. And what's something else that's really cool is this is the first maze we've done where all the monsters are actually alive um, during this scene. You know, they're either just dying, they have con contusions, or, and your captain, captain probably doesn't remember this yet. Captain Blue. Captain Blue. So basically you're saying it's a younger version of me. It is a younger version of you. Do I get to choose who plays your younger me? No. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned monsters. We're gonna need a lot of good monsters for this. Wally, are we gonna have a lot of good monsters again this year? We're gonna have a lot of good monsters everywhere at the event this year. We had our biggest turnout we've ever had at Dark Harbor for auditions this past weekend. Saw amazingly talented people. Our veterans came back super duper strong. And we had so many brand new people who came in and just knocked our, shock, our socks off. So it's, it's good. They're very, very excited. Open the gate with you, Captain, with all our monsters ready to get us going. You look, you're looking forward to that? I am. That's like the zenith of your career, isn't it? Yes. Ten years for you and Congo. You haven't got another job yet. That's the best you can do. <laughs> Opening the gates with me. That's sad, Wally. I'd rather be nowhere else anywhere. I would rather be nowhere else. Nowhere else than you. Really? Love you. I think that is a okay. Can you? Someone get us out of this soppy moment right now. I have nowhere to go with this heartfelt feeling stuff. Thank you. We'll just open the gates. 
All right. Well, I mean, that's pretty much Dark Harbor, isn't it? We get bigger every year, we get more popular every year, and I think it's because no one ever leaves, people just keep coming back year after year. Characters, Voodoo Priestess. Yeah. Now, for the past, do you remember Voodoo Village, right? Yeah. And for the past five years, the Voodoo Priestess. Six has years, Captain. I'm sorry, what? Six years. Five, six years, who's counting? Good God, woman. Five, six years, you have not only been the Voodoo Priestess, you've been heading up the fire team, haven't you? Yeah. Are you coming back this year? Yes, I am. That's wonderful! Yes. Perfect! For the first weekend. What? What do you mean for the first weekend? For the first weekend. Where are you going? I'm moving. To where? To Florida. <laughs> Florida? Florida! What the hell's in Florida? Well, I'm taking my voodoo to Orlando. Wait, are you... Nice Orlando. <laughs> Are you taking the fire team with you? I am taking fire with me. Wait, 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 wait. We're gonna, we're gonna have fire at Dark Harbor, right? Yes, Dark Harbor will still have fire. But how is this possible? <laughs> Captain, I am woman. I can multitask. Wow, okay, fine. You're just everywhere then, aren't you? Like death and taxes. <laughs> Meet Joe Black. What? Oh, he's so black. She, she said death and taxes. It's a line from Meet Joe Black. Yeah, I know, I know. It's like a film that you just happen to work on. Do you need to name drop your resume every time you're on stage? Well, she said it. No, 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 please. Regale it. We've got nothing better to do. Name drop. Tell us all about... Brad and Al and Bruce and Sir Anthony Hopkins. He's a great guy, actually, and he prefers to be called Tony. Oh my God! Tell me more about me. Joe Black said no one ever. The beautiful film. Thank you. Yes, it's a beautiful film. We're at a horror convention, though. So. What exactly is in Orlando that's taking you away from Dark Harbor? Dark Horizon. No, no, I said Dark Harbor. Yes, and I said Dark Horizon. I have told you not to swallow the fuel, for God's sake. Captain, I swear. Uh, is she all right? What, what is going on, Charity? She is, she is. What she's talking about is we are opening a brand new haunt in Orlando called Dark Horizon. And, you, and you're all, you're all doing this? We are. Well, I know you're doing it, John Cook. You're working on every bloody haunt in America right now. <laughs> Charity, how is this possible? I'm a woman, I can multitask. <laughs> My sister. Oh my god, it's like the sisterhood of the traveling pants, isn't it? Just <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't make me. So, Florida, right? <laughs> can I still call you Voodoo Priestess? Oh no no. Mumbo Sassil. Uh, who and what now? I am Mumbo Sassil. What is she talking about? <laughs> Cecile Fatiman. She's only considered the queen of Haitian voodoo. She's pretty fantastic. She lived over a hundred years. Mambo is the Haitian word for voodoo priestess, hence Mambo Cecile. Okay. And you created this maze, John? Did you? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> Fine. So until then, I can still call you Voodoo Priestess. Until we move to Orlando. Okay, deal. Fine. You know, Captain. What? 
You should come with me. Shut up! Is, it, is this a work thing or a pseudo-sexual thing? I don't know what you're asking me about. We can talk about that later, but... You mean, so, wait, how, what, what am I going to do in Orlando? Florida is where people go to die. Actually, that sounds, that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Calm down, just do first weekend at Dark Harbor, and then go with me to Orlando. Huh. Nobody asked you. Wait a, wait a second, wait a second. Isn't this confusing? You're doing both? No. Yeah. No? How, how can you tell the difference between Dark Horizon and Dark Harbor? Well, one, one's D-H-O, one's D-H-A. <laughs> Final system. Simple. De Ha and De Ho. <laughs> That's okay. how you tell, that doesn't even make sense. Harbor, I get. De Ha. Horizon, it should be De Ho. Oh, well, that's not gonna work. <laughs> Okay, the 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 ho, fine. So, Dark Horizon, you're going after the first weekend. All right, is that the way you tell them apart, ho and ha? There's not another way you can tell them apart. Well, maybe, maybe by the, the program itself. Oh, the program! Whoa, what a beautiful mind you have, John Nash. And you just see the little hamster died of a cardiac arrest while running for its life on the treadmill inside your mind, trying to keep up with your brain, connecting the dots on that one, Conga. <laughs> Charity, the Dark Horizon and Dark Harbor are going to have different programs. They are. A little bit of yes and a little bit of no. Oh my god, have you been taking screenwriting classes from Wally that told me nothing? <laughs> what I mean Please by elaborate. that. What I mean by that is the overall aesthetic of Dark Horizon is going to be one that our fans of Dark Harbor know and love. We'll have the IP cabanas, uh, two stages, fire axe, aerial, specialty, sliders, bars, lots of bars. And clearly, clearly some mazes. Three different mazes, John. Three mazes. Okay. Of which, Voodoo Priestess here, Mumbo number five. <laughs> is, uh, is, is going to, that's going to be your mates. I'm going to shuck that oyster right off your face. Oh you my god. We're running a little long. We better get to these mazes quick. <laughs> yeah, I'm interested. What else you got down there, John? I'm, I'm seriously considering Orlando right now. Uh, yes, um, our voodoo priestess, Mumbo number five, number five uh, has hers called Voodoo. On uh, this, we are taking a uh, trip through the religion of Voodoo and our priestess going through Haitian huts and actually seeing what it takes to go into the underworld through the, the voodoo religion. And we're going to take our, our path through all of that with her. Okay, that sounds interesting. That's your maze. What else you got? Because I'm kind of intrigued by this Dark Horizon business. John, tell them about Murder Island. Murder Island. Super fun experience. It's got a, it's an open air environment. So when we went and looked at, at the property, there's a corner off in the back that is backed into the bayou and has all the big trees that are falling up and over top. And we said we have to lean into that. So you're actually going to be walking through the canopy of the actual bayou in the swamp, and you're going to be walking through Florida's first, the story of the Florida's first serial, serial killer, Bloody Watson. Absolutely. Is this a true story as well, Charity? It is. It is. It's what we like to do is history, right? So, Bloody Ed Watson, he was Florida's first serial killer. He murdered over 57 people in what is back then called the 10,000 Islands and now is considered the Everglades. So, <laughs> instead of paying all of his workers, he made his money and his fortunes on sugarcane plantations, and at the end of the season, he wouldn't pay them, he would murder them, dismember them, and feed them to the local wildlife. <laughs> are, you, are you okay, Captain? Yeah, I like this guy. He sounds like my kind of guy. <laughs> so, so that's two mazes. What's your third? Ghost ship. Ghost ship. Ghost ship! Yes, sir. I like the sounds of this. Oh, Go ahead. Ghost ship, you're going to be entering into the broken out hole of a ship. 
and you'd be walking through the different areas of this pirate ship underneath the decks, going through all the different areas, and then you're gonna take a staircase up onto the top deck of the ship, where you're gonna come face to face with one of our characters that you're gonna love. But then, what's great about this, you're gonna have to walk the plank. And you're gonna go down off of the top deck into a giant foam pit that's infested with sharks. Oh. 